My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of blood oxygen levels and in particular causes of low blood oxygen levels. Now, since the start of the COVID pandemic, many people have invested in pulse oximeters, which are a little device which can tell you how much oxygen is present in the blood. Because a lot of patients have these at home, when I go to work and I see someone who's come in with a heart attack, sometimes what I get is patients will say, look, you know, I got a bit of chest pain. And at that time, I did my pulse um, oximetry. I measured my oxygen levels and they were fine. So I wasn't worried about it. And this is a mistake. And I wanted, therefore, to try and explain to you why you could have normal oxygen levels in your blood, but still be having a heart attack or still have a problem which needs checking out. So the pulse oximeter looks like this, okay? This is a pulse oximeter, you switch it on. Uh, mine is by a company called Medlinkit, all right? I'll put a description and a link. Um, but this is a pulse oximeter. And what you do is you put your finger in like this and it will then um, switch it on and it will then pick up a signal. And the way uh, these machines work is that shine two lights. So the two lights are shined through my finger, uh, my fingertip. One is a red light and one is an infrared light, okay? And blood that contains lots of oxygen will absorb more infrared light and let more red light pass through it. And blood that does not have as much oxygen will absorb more red light and let more infrared light through, pass through it. And this way the oximeter can work out how much oxygen is present in the blood. And it will give you this value. Here you can see mine read at 99%. So this 97, anything from 94 to 100% is completely normal. So I've got oxygen saturations at rest of 97%, which is acceptable. Uh, so this is what information this gives you. Now, this is great if you have normal oxygen saturations, but what does it mean if the oxygen saturations are low? And what mechanisms cause low oxygen saturations? And this is what I will try and discuss in today's video. Now, oxygen is an essential element for life. And without oxygen, humans can only survive for a few minutes before their vital tissues start suffocating and dying. It is therefore vital that there is adequate oxygen available to the tissues at all times and that there is the ability within the body to match any extra demand with extra supply of oxygen. And the two main systems within our bodies that are responsible for maintaining this balance between supply of oxygen and demand for oxygen are the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system. So the respiratory system, which consists of the airways, the lungs, and the respiratory system is responsible for getting air from the atmosphere into the body and then loading our blood cells with oxygen. And the heart is responsible for pumping this oxygen-rich blood around into our vital organs where the oxygen is then unloaded and used by our tissues. If either the lungs or the heart start malfunctioning, then our tissues may not get the amount of oxygen that they need, and therefore they may start suffocating and eventually dying. The term for having less oxygen in the blood, which is predominantly a function of the lungs and the blood supply to the lungs, is termed hypoxemia. Okay? Hypo meaning low, oxy, oxygen, emia in the blood. So hypoxemia means less oxygen in the blood. And what these devices do is they look for hypoxemia. Whilst hypoxemia is important, it's more important that the blood is actually unloaded into the tissues. And the term for having less oxygen in the tissues is termed hypoxia. So you, you may say that, okay, well, hypoxemia is equal to hypoxia. And it's reasonable to assume that if you have less oxygen in the blood, then that may lead to less oxygen in the tissues. 
but it is important to understand that hypoxemia, less blood, less oxygen in the blood, and hypoxia, less oxygen in the tissues, are not synonymous terms, i.e. there are situations where you may have less oxygen in the blood, but the tissues may still get the amount of oxygen that they need. This happens, for example, with altitude training. Here, uh, there is less available oxygen. So when you're at altitude, there's less available oxygen, and therefore less oxygen is loaded onto each blood cell. But people who have adapted to this will have increased the amount of blood cells that they have and their cardiac output, and therefore, even though each cell is loaded with less oxygen, there are more cells and therefore the tissues get the amount of blood that they need. Similarly, it may be possible to have plenty of oxygen in the blood, but if that oxygen is not unloaded where it is needed or for some reason can't even get to the tissues, then the tissues can become deprived of oxygen despite there being enough oxygen in the blood. This happens, for example, in cyanide poisoning, where the tissues are simply not able to use the oxygen. More importantly, in a heart attack, for example, the problem is not that there is a lack of oxygen in the blood, so your oxygen saturations may remain completely normal, but there is a blockage, and therefore that blood simply cannot get to the tissues, and the tissues suffocate not because there's a shortage of oxygen in the blood, but simply because that blood cannot reach the tissues. And so it is important for people who, for example, are getting chest pain not to rely on measuring their oxygen levels because that isn't telling you what you need to know. You want to know whether the blood is getting to the tissues and because the blood isn't getting to the tissues, that is manifesting as pain. So hypoxia can happen in the absence of hypoxemia and vice versa. When we use a pulse oximeter, we are indirectly looking for the presence or, or absence of hypoxemia and not hypoxia, as I've said. Now, there are four real reasons for hypoxemia, i.e. low oxygen saturations on the pulse oximeter. The reason I say real is because there may be other reasons that the machine may show that the oxygen levels are low incorrectly. So, you know, if there was a barrier like nail polish then that would affect the light that is shone through my fingertip and I would get an incorrect reading. But that is an incorrect reading due to a limitation of the device, not because I have low oxygen saturations. But why could a person have low oxygen saturations? Uh, there are four or five main reasons. I'll just go through the main four initially. The first is obviously low inspired oxygen. So if you take less oxygen in, you will have lower levels. The second is that there may be enough oxygen in the air, but you may not be able to breathe that in quick enough. So it's called hyperventilation. The third is something called VQ mismatch. And the fourth are right to left shunts. So I'll go through each of them one by one, okay? The first was low inspired oxygen. This one is fairly straightforward. If there is less available oxygen in the air that you breathe, then there will be less oxygen in the blood. So less oxygen gets into the lung. From there, less oxygen gets into the blood. So this happens when we go up altitude, especially if our bodies have not had time to acclimatize and adapt. In this setting, if you give the patient more oxygen, the hypoxemia will improve. The second is hypoventilation. In this situation, there's enough oxygen in the air but unfortunately, for some reason, there's a problem with ventilation, i.e. getting enough of that air into the lungs. This can happen with neuromuscular problems such as myopathies, myasthenia gravis, where the muscles that help us take a deep enough breath are weakened or paralyzed. Uh, drugs like morphine, benzodiazepines, alcohol can also cause hypoventilation. Patients who've had a big stroke uh, are also at risk of hyperventilation. Even patients who have sleep apnea, so they're okay during the day. When they go to sleep, they stop breathing momentarily and their oxygen levels go down. Um, when patients are short of oxygen, they try and compensate by breathing harder. But eventually, if they're breathing harder and harder, 
their, will, their muscle will start to tire and this will also lead to hyperventilation. So the treatment for hyperventilation is if you're just not able to breathe adequately is to give supplemental oxygen, increase the amount of oxygen and then treat the condition that is causing the hyperventilation or mechanically aid with artificial ventilation. So, you know, you can actually breathe for the patient by connecting to them to a machine. Those are what ventilators do. The third um, cause of low blood oxygen levels is something called VQ mismatch or ventilation perfusion mismatch. If the parts of the lung that are receiving the most air are not also receiving the most blood, then there may be a mismatch between the ventilation and perfusion, i.e. if blood is being driven to areas which are not getting as much air through them, lungs, areas of the lung which are not getting as much air through them, and then there is no blood going to those areas which are getting lots of uh, air, then there is a mismatch and this will lead to less oxygen getting into the blood. So for example, if you have a blood clot in a vessel, in a blood vessel leading to the lung, then the blood isn't getting there, the air is still going into the lung and therefore you will develop low oxygen levels. Similarly, if you have a pneumonia, for example, a part of the lung has collapsed, it's infected, and the blood is still getting there, but the oxygen isn't, that lung is not really contributing as much to oxygen transfer into the blood, and therefore you will again develop low oxygen levels. In that case, if there is a VQ mismatch, then you want to treat that pathology. So if you have a pneumonia, giving the patient antibiotics, if you have a blood clot, trying to dissolve that clot, and obviously supplementing with oxygen will help. Um, now the fourth is a very interesting thing which is a right to left shunt. In this setting unfortunately some of the blood coming back from the tissues which is rich in carbon dioxide and poor in oxygen never reaches the lung. Instead it bypasses the lungs altogether and mixes with the rest of the blood that is coming back from the lungs and therefore dilutes the oxygen richness of the blood. This is uh, often seen in patients who have a hole in the heart where some of the blood goes from the right side of the heart to the left side through this hole bypassing the lung. So it really never collects more oxygen. And in this setting, the hallmark is that if you give the patient more oxygen, it does not correct the hypoxemia. So if you have a shunt, uh, a right to left shunt where the blood from the right doesn't go to the lungs but goes through the heart or some other kind of shunt to the left side, uh, diluting the richness of the oxygen in the blood that is coming from the lungs, then you will develop hypoxemia. If you give that patient more oxygen, the hypoxemia does not get better because the problem was never a shortage of oxygen, the problem was a shortage of blood going to the lungs because blood was going through this hole and going somewhere else. So these are the main causes of hypoxemia. As I say, a blood clot, you know, a heart attack, a lack of blood to the legs, that doesn't tell you about the, the, the oxygen saturations don't tell you that. So the oxygen saturations are good because they tell you what's going on in the lungs. Um, but if you have chest pain, if you have a problem, you still have a problem and you should still seek help. One more thing worth mentioning is that often patients notice breathlessness when they're exerting themselves. And when they go to their doctor, the doctor may measure their oxygen levels at rest and reassure them. However, in this setting, it is very important for the doctor to exercise the patient to the point whether the patient becomes breathless and then measure the oxygen levels during exercise. And when a person drops their oxygen levels on exercise, it points to one of the four mechanisms I have alluded to. So I hope you found this useful and I would love to hear your thoughts. It's the beginning of the new year. I wish you all a very happy new year and I look forward to chatting to you soon.